Hey everyone, it is late at night and I am Norman. I have owned the D1 Milano for a little bit over a year now, so I figure it's about time to do a one year review of it. So let us begin. So when you buy a D1 Milano, this is the box that it ships in. Just kind of a plain cardboard box. The extra links. And the box inside that. The lid just kind of flops open and there it is. It's on a Rolex style cushion there. And I still have the sticker. I keep these around just in case I end up selling a piece because I like for the seller to be able to experience what it's like buying the watch brand new so that they can peel off stickers as well. And there is the D1 Milano Ultra Thin. When I originally did a review of this watch, I kept describing it as a Nautilus homage, but if you look at some of the ultra-thin Royal Oaks, it actually looks more like those. It has an integrated bracelet, and it tapers way down, all nice and vintage style, and this bracelet is really great. It's quiet. I haven't noticed any sound at all when I'm wearing it. There's a little bit of wear and tear there but not a whole lot. It has a butterfly style clasp, which is good and bad. It looks great, but you don't have micro adjustment. So this bracelet is almost an in-between size for me. If it's really cold out and my wrist is kind of uh, shrunken up, this is really loose. I tried removing one more link, but it was way too tight. That is the only downside with butterfly style clasps. So this is a friction fit closure here. However, it closes really snugly. Once this is clasped, it is not going anywhere. In fact, it's actually a little bit difficult to get it back open. So that's pretty cool. It's nice and solid, just really well made here. Looking at the case back, it is also brushed and very thin. It doesn't stick out at all. Just nice and utilitarian there. Pretty minimal information on the back. These lugs are drilled. However, unless you buy a specialized strap, you probably won't be taking this off at all. D1 Milano has come out with some pieces that are on leather, so you may be able to find a strap on their site. I actually haven't looked for those. But if that's what you're after, definitely check out their site. They may have some leather straps you can get for this. Most of the case is brushed. There is some polishing here on the bezel. And you'll notice that even after owning this for over a year, I really don't have any scratches on it yet. A little bit of smudging here, but no scratches. Looking at the side of the case, we see that it lives up to its name. This is ultra thin. In fact, it is only six millimeters tall. The crown is pretty tiny, but you're not gonna be using it a whole lot. It has a great little jewel on there, and the aesthetic just matches the rest of the watch with that angular shape to it. So this is a quartz piece. It's a two-hander. So it's kind of incognito. Let's pop this crown out. And it feels really nice when you're setting it. In here. Now you'll notice the crown doesn't really pop out a whole lot, but again, being quartz, you're not gonna be using it a whole lot. The crystal is flat and there's just a slight little bevel there on the edge just enough to catch a little bit of light. The dial is absolutely brilliant. Look at that texture. All the indices are applied as you can see there. I love me some Dauphine hands and these are just great. It would be kind of cool if they did what Seiko does 
and do one side polished and the other brushed so that you can really see the dividing line down the middle. Looking at it straight on, they just look kind of large and almost featureless, but I love Dalphine hands. I like how minimal the text is on the dial. You just have D1 Milano, ultra thin. This watch just feels absolutely solid. It's not super heavy, but it feels quality. As for the specifications on this watch, it has a 40 millimeter case size. It's only six millimeters tall. The case is stainless steel. The crystal is sapphire. And the movement inside this watch is a Citizen Miyota 1L22 quartz movement. It has 50 meters of water resistance. All right, so let me take the pull router off and I'll show you what this watch looks like when you're wearing it. There is the D1 Milano on my seven inch wrist. And kind of like Bauhaus pieces, this design causes it to wear larger. If you have large wrists, this would be a brilliant watch for you. Personally, I would love to try some of their smaller pieces that they've come out with. I think they have some of, of the ultra thins that are 38 millimeters, but I'm waiting for them to come out with one with a black dial. Right now, I think it's just blue and a couple other colors, but this just looks great. I've pondered selling this just because I don't wear it a ton, but I can never bring myself to actually pull the trigger and do that because it just looks so great. Whenever I see it sitting on the shelf, I'm tempted to wear it. Seriously cool looking watch. So what are my thoughts on this watch? Having owned it for a bit over a year now, I would say if you're going for this aesthetic, definitely check out D1 Milano. They're affordable-ish. They're a few hundred dollars. I bought this one straight from D1 Milano, but you might be able to find them cheaper on places like eBay, but these are seriously nice watches, and they're constantly coming up with new pieces. I'm subscribed to their newsletter, and there's just all kinds of new watches that they're coming up with. They've done a bunch, like I mentioned, that are on leather straps, They've done some made of different materials, all kinds of really cool colorways, and even some slightly smaller ones. So definitely check them out if you're after a piece that has sort of a Royal Oak or Nautilus look to it. Just such a cool looking watch. So there you have it, the D1 Ultra Thin Quartz Watch. It's fairly affordable, but what a tough, brilliant watch. I think I'm gonna have to try and check out some of their smaller variants of this though, just because it's so thin and flat. I feel like 37 or 38 would be amazing. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.